the Spring Festival, as it's known in China, sees the largest mass migration of people on the planet. <laughs> One sixth of the world's population travels home to celebrate with their loved ones. <laughs> The most significant night of the festival is New Year's Eve, or Chu Shi, as it's called in Mandarin. This is when families gather to eat, drink, and celebrate. This episode, we're in Beijing to explore the traditions associated with this special night. Where are you guys going for? Beef. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. And gain access to the world's biggest television show. What thing? Are you doing? Is it a performance? I don't know. I can't tell you. Oh, okay, okay. Tonight, we'll discover what it's like to be at the world's biggest party. It's magical. It is great. As over a billion people sit down to the most important dinner of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Is one of the central aspects of Chinese life, and the New Year holiday is often the only chance that families get to be together all year. In Beijing, one of the favorite pastimes for families is being out on Huhai Lake. During the Sui Dynasty, around 1500 years ago, it was the terminus of the Grand Canal, where barges from all over China brought goods to the emperor. Now it's a place of pleasure where modern Beijingers meet, eat, and chat. And the changing role of Huhai Lake mirrors the incredible transformation that has taken place all over Beijing itself. Dave Myers and Sai King went to find out what it's like to live in this huge city in the 21st century. The word Beijing actually means northern capital. The city lies in the northeast of the country, surrounded by desert and mountains. Beijing is China's second largest city and home to 21 million people and some of the most jaw-dropping architecture on the planet. It's the nation's cultural, political, and financial center, and an economic powerhouse. Millions pour into the capital from all over the country every year to seek their fortune. Beijing has transformed enormously over the last decade to meet demand, and some of its old ways have changed too. The Chinese, they love their cars, and well, to be fair, you don't see that many cyclists anymore. Ah, but hopefully things are going to change. Due to a government bike-sharing initiative, they want to put people back on the bike and also make cycling well cool again. Oh, yeah. Beijing is an important player on the global stage. In 2022, it will become the only city in the world ever to have hosted both the Summer and the Winter Olympic Games. Its growing wealth and dynamism has created an incredible population explosion in an already expanding city. In 10 years, the number of people in Beijing has grown by 44 percent. It's predicted the city's population will be 50 million. By 2050, which means every New Year's Eve celebration in Beijing will just keep getting bigger. But despite the vast and swift expansion of modern Beijing, 
the city still retains some elements of its historic past. It's been on this site since 1420. That's nearly 600 years old. That's a long time. Look at the view. Wow! Now look, Beijing has changed a lot, but it still has some of its ancient buildings. And what you can see right over there, that is the Drum Tower, which is in direct line of sight from here, the Bell Tower. The Bell Tower, it houses this gigantic bronze bell. It weighs in at a whopping 63 tonnes, and it plays a vitally significant part in the New Year's Eve celebrations. Precisely at 12 o'clock, on the dot, it struck. It's a bit like Beijing's Big Ben, and that lets the new year in. Now, the bell is struck by a big wooden ram in the shape of a whale. It struck 108 times because that's significant as a lucky number for the Chinese. Now, there's a point, though. We can't strike the bell. Aye, the reason being that some time ago, the bell ringers were practising. The city thought there was an earthquake or some such disaster. So, there's no ringing of the bell till New Year's Eve. But, you know, it is an incredible feat of engineering. Yeah. First, this is 600 years ago, the bell, a model, was made in butter and beeswax. How mad is that? Butter and beeswax. And then a massive pit was dug and they worked from the top to the bottom. They cast it and poured 63 tonnes of molten bronze into that cast. Amazing. Well, ding dong. And I, for one, can't wait to hear that bell sound on New Year's Eve. And the ancient traditions of New Year's Eve remain the same in family homes across this city too, as they prepare for the New Year's Eve reunion dinner. Like most Beijingers, Christine Zhang leads a busy life. But each spring, she and her family take a break from their modern lifestyle to indulge in the traditions that make this time of year so special. Chinese New Year is uh, the most important festival in Chinese culture. It is a festival that requires whole family to get together, so it gives us a concept of reunion. Me and my husband are uh, going to celebrate together with my parents and my sister, her whole family. In the first five days of the new year, we're not supposed to do any cleaning. So before that, the whole house needs to be thoroughly cleaned and everyone in the family should get involved. <laughs> this year is special to our family because we have a few monkeys in the family because this is the year of monkey. My mom, my sister, my brother-in-law and uncle and auntie, they're all monkeys, so <laughs> this is really their year. While Christine and her sister pick up some last-minute decorations from the market, the men of the family, including three-year-old Ji Yen, have an important appointment. There is an interesting tradition that we need to have our hair cut before the Chinese New Year Day. But there's more to the traditional New Year haircut than just looking your best. Because in China, we believe that if we have a haircut in the first month of the New Year, then it will do harm to the maternal uncle's health. I don't personally understand why it has anything to say with the poor uncle. <laughs> Since the Year of the Monkey is particularly important for Christine's family, they're having some special decorations made. Paper scrolls are normally put up on both sides of the doorway. There are certain strict rules to mirror the words, like if there is a character on the left-hand side saying sky, for example, then there should be another one in the right-hand side saying ground. And if there is rain, there's wind. There's red, there's green. So it's kind of a thing that brings good blessing and good wishes for the new year. This is the pair for our family. And here it says, sending over the old year with three sheep. And this one says, Welcome in the new spring with six monkeys.
There are over 400 million households in China, and on New Year's Eve, they will all be sitting down to the reunion dinner. Traditionally, many people choose to have this at home. All this partying puts enormous pressure on Beijing's biggest wholesale food market, which has to respond to the incredible demand of New Year's celebrations. If there's one place that's the very soul of Beijing's food culture, this must be it. Imagine if all the fresh food consumed by a city was all put together in one place. Well, feast your eyes on this, the Zen Fatty Food Market. The biggest wholesale market in Asia. This mammoth market sprawls over one square kilometre. It provides 80% of all the agricultural produce consumed in Beijing. It's like a town that's dedicated to food. What could be better? Nothing. This food town has constant food traffic. And to keep Beijing's 21 million people fed, it has food neighbourhoods too. Some produce is so popular, it has its own street. Guess where we are? Pumpkin Street. This is Onion Street. And this, this is Merrill Street. Unsurprisingly. Wearing the best market in Beijing, it would be criminal not to cook up a traditional New Year feast. Luckily, we're going to have a helping hand. Local restaurateur <laughs> Su Jo is from a long line of chefs, so she knows old school Chinese cookery inside out. Do you love coming here? Yes, yeah, it's really, really nice to be here. It's a huge market, and you can get anything here. It's like anything you can think of, you can get it here. Yeah. yeah. The first thing Sue wants to show us is a Beijing cookery basic, the cabbage. Why have you brought us here, Sue? So in Chinese, we call this bai cai, in, um, the cabbage, Chinese cabbage. And the reason why we love to eat it during Chinese New Year is if you pronounce it slightly different, that means one hundred fortune in Chinese. It tastes more like a poem than a meal. It is. Liang ge bai cai. So we're going to cook a hot pot. Is it like a really traditional dish here? It is, yeah. OK. Thank you. Success with the shopping. Perfect. Yeah. OK, yeah, great. Can't wait. Okay. Sue's given us a list of hot pot ingredients to find in the market. Lotus root, mushrooms and beef. Hello, how are you? How are you? There's no stalls as such. The trucks rock up, they sell the veg, they go home. That's how it works. Be sold out. Have you sold out? Oh, good. Very good. Hello, how are you? I'm oh, very good. How are you? Yes. Yeah, Do you know what? There's a real happy atmosphere here, isn't there? It's it's lush. So Sue wants us to get lotus root. Look at that. That man's like living in a swamp of his own making. That's remarkable. Go on, Dave, get stuck in. Right. Can I have three? Dave? Yeah. Now, Dave calls this a hard-nosed haggling technique. How much? Oh. I call it handing over the dosh. No questions asked. 20? Uh -huh. Oh, it's two quid, I suppose. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Just as well, it's as reasonably priced as it is fresh. Thank you. Thank you. On to the next item on Sue's list. Mushrooms. Look at them, Si. They're like velvet. They look like people's ears. You know, like you when you're playing rugby, the cauliflower ears. <laughs> Get loads, these are superb. There's one more item left to buy. And that means heading deep into the heart of the market. This is Beijing's meat hanger. In the West, we tend to design a meal around our choice of meat. But traditional Chinese cooks use meat more like a garnish. There's such a lot of choice. There is. Now, I know my beef, but finding the right cut for Sue's recipe isn't as easy as you'd think. It's hard to, you know, recognise the joints. That's silver side. Well, silver side would be good. Yeah, we could do that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, could we have yeah. this? Please, thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. Great. 
Well, it was a bit of a mission, but we finally tracked down and bought everything on the list. And once we find Sue's restaurant, we can get cooking. Tucked away in the depths of old Beijing, Sue's place is the perfect homely spot to enjoy a traditional New Year hot pot. So what would you like us to do? So we're going to slice it up and Just then... Just slice? Yeah. As we chop up all those lovely Chinese veggies... Tis, look at that. The design of that's brilliant. It's like a hard loofah. We get a hearty broth on the boil. And then in goes our beef. You just, like, drop it in here. It's like a Chinese fondue. Oh, no. no. It's, not it's stick there. <laughs> the pot wants to have your piece of beef. <laughs> it's sheer and utter genius, this. It's theatre, isn't it? It is. I think it's done, yeah. It's time to let the New Year feasting begin. What are you guys going for? Beef. Hot. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> It's hot pots. <laughs> is it true that the Chinese like a bit of a chew, like a little bite in the food? Yes, we call it QQ, which is like Q -Q. chewiness. Yeah. Like if it bounces back. Yeah. That texture we really like. Cooking and eating together at the table is just fantastic. No wonder this is a New Year favourite. This would be a great thing to do at home. Mm. Just get yourself a little burner, little pot, get the family round, don't burn yourself. It might not be as good as it sues, though. It will definitely, undoubtedly <laughs> not. Lucky food is served across the whole holiday period, not just New Year's Eve, to ensure good fortune for the forthcoming Year of the Monkey. <laughs> And there's one traditional drink, baiju, which plays a major role across the festival. Baiju is a tradition that is centuries old and full of secrets. Sichuan province is famous for its fiery food, but the city of Luzhou is also home to strong aroma baijiu. Pure water from the surrounding Phoenix Mountains has long been a key part of the distilling process here. I've come to the country's longest continually running distillery here in Luzhou, Laozia. Here they've been making baijiu for nearly 450 years. The baijiu here is famous for its fierce licorice flavours. Letting me in on the secret is Anna Chen. This is our workshop. Wow. What an amazing space. It's a real hive of activity. It's like a fiery inferno bursting with fumes. Lao Jiao Bai Zhou is made out of a grain called sorghum, which is constantly recycled. Used sorghum is mixed with fresh grains for each batch, meaning the drink has been flavoured with grains that are centuries old. Water, yeast and microbes begin the fermentation process. So there's microbes, yeah. grain, yeast, and it gets put in the pit and it ferments. Yes. So how long does that take? Three to six months. Some of these ancient pits have been in continuous use since 1573 and have passed through centuries of China's tumultuous history. After fermentation, the powerful blend is transferred into large distilling vats. So basically, he's spreading it out inside here. Yes. And then this gets heated up and boiled. How long will it be in the boiler for? Uh, about 30 minutes. Just 30 minutes? Yes. Steam rises up through the fermented sorghum and finally condenses into this mighty drink. I've been invited by one of the distillery workers to a local restaurant to learn the special art of drinking baijiu. 
Thanks to Confucius, etiquette is a vital part of Chinese life, so there are centuries-old rituals that need to be observed. So you're the host, what's your role? As a host, we'll toast three times. Gambay. Gambay. Once the host has toasted three times, it seems fair game for anyone else to raise their glass. Guess always comes first. So what if you're on a table with 20 people? 20 people, then one by one. Friends. Bai Joe is generally brought out for formal occasions and celebrations. Cheers. 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 It's just as well, because some of us are struggling to keep up. Okay. OK. Good man. So, when you're in having business meetings, do you drink through a business meeting? Yes. Yes. How do you get any work done? <laughs> OK, goodbye. In modern China, Baijiu is an essential part of business etiquette. And once you're in a toasting round, it's tricky to get out. Like, it sounds like a drinking game. Uh, it's not actually the drinking game, it's drinking tradition. If you want to play some drinking games, <laughs> five, ten, no. now. This is drinking games. Yeah. Last time I played a drinking game, I ended up naked. I think I better leave the Baijiu to the experts. Happy New Year. 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 <laughs> However, it's not just food and drink that features significantly at this time of year. Flowers are also hugely popular. The Chinese buy them to decorate their homes for the festival. Millions of flowers are brought into Chinese cities every day in the run-up to New Year. In the far south of the country lies Kunming, China's spring city. Its warm and temperate climate has made this city the centre of the flower industry. Kunming and the surrounding area supply 70% of all the flowers sold in China. I've come to one of the largest flower farms in the area, Jin Yuan. I've never seen anything like it. It's more like a factory than a farm. Every single thing grown here is grown under plastic in these polytunnels and they stretch for 500 acres. It's remarkable. The farm produces an unbelievable 7 million flowers every year. Demand peaks in the run-up to Chinese New Year. During this time, they buy the flower to like a gift oh. and to celebrate. You've got beautiful yellow, red, red pink and behind yeah, us. Yeah. Is there a particular colour that's particularly important for Chinese New Year? Uh, red. It's a lovely place to work, surrounded <laughs> by true. beautiful flowers, flowers all the time. You are, you are feel ha very happy yeah. the, the whole day. This is big business, worth up to 30 million Chinese yuan per year. That's over three million pounds. This one? That one, okay. They need to be... Uh. They need to be the same length. <laughs> right, oh, right down there, shoot, yeah? Shoot, shoot. Okay, got it. These ladies have been cutting roses all their working lives. They live locally to the farm. And apparently they cut between three and 5,000 roses every morning. Right down there. I asked them if they grow flowers at home, but they don't. Vegetables, much more practical. This one? So the harvesting happens just as the heads are starting to open up. And they're cut really far down, so you get these lovely long stems. And there seems to be a way of bunching them, which I think I might have messed up already. Once the roses are cut, they come in here 
to be sorted, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, basically, they're sorted by stem length, and uh, once that's happened, they get moved over to the packing area, and they're packed in sort of carefully wrapped in cardboard. So you have a line of five blooms, cardboard folds over another five blooms, and that's one pack, all really carefully protected. Eighty percent of the farm's roses are sold back in the city at the Kunming International Flora Auction Trading Center, one of the biggest auctions in Asia. This is where wholesalers go to buy large quantities of flowers at cheap prices. This is the main flower auction in Yunnan and flowers from all over the province will come here. There are about 100 different varieties and as it gets closer to Chinese New Year, the pace just picks up exponentially. They've had to bring in 500 students just to go through all the flowers, count them, check them and pack them into these orange crates. The smell here is unbelievable. It's not highly perfumed, but it's just this amazing smell of kind of fresh cut wood. It's just wonderful. This vast space serves as a viewing room, which gives potential buyers the opportunity to inspect the flowers before bidding on them. What tells you that these are good and that you want to buy them? It's like a flower that doesn't have a flower. It's very clean. In 2014, over 750 million fresh cut flowers were sold through here. I'm used to agricultural auctions, but this is quite unlike anything I've ever seen before. This is an absolutely fascinating process. I don't think I've ever been to an auction like this. I'm used to kind of buying sheep. Here, it's a bit like taking part in some sort of weird game show. Everyone's sitting in front of these little consoles. There is a man talking, but you have to wear headphones to listen to him. And obviously, I don't understand a word he's saying. Unlike auctions that we're used to in Britain, this is a Dutch auction. This means that the auction begins at a high asking price, which is lowered until it reaches a price that someone is willing to pay. The orange dot represents the price. When the dot stops, someone has bought a batch of blooms. On average, a lot is sold every three seconds. But it's crucial to hold your nerve until the price is right. It's a real sense of concentration, quite a lot of smoking going on. There's quite a lot of sort of nervous energy in the air. The cheapest flowers can go for as little as 1p, but these bidders will be buying in the hundreds and thousands. Luckily, to help make sense of the bewildering numbers and lights, I've got some help from a seasoned bidder. This is Mr. Xian. Mr. Xian, hello, has a, kind of adopted me. He's been showing me how to do it, and very unwisely has lent me his credit card. Mr. Xiang is buying a variety of roses for his store in Beijing. What do you think? Two. Okay. Two and so, so okay. And, you can, you can, and, and, and the, only on number one, all right. Yeah. I've got one. Quite a lot of money. It appears I've just bought Mr. Xiang 200 Corolla roses at 10p each. I'm going to have to walk home at this rate, all the way back to the UK. It's so quick! They're quick, these guys. At peak times, like in the run-up to the new year, five million flowers can be sold here every day. That's over 3,000 every minute. Uh, yes! I've got 100 at 0.81. Is that a good one? Very good. Very good? Mm. <laughs> I could come and work for you, Mr. Shim. 
You'd have no money. Despite my help, Mr. Xiang purchases between six to seven thousand roses at the total cost of eight thousand yuan, which is around eight hundred and sixty pounds. These flowers will be sold to customers the very next day, all ready for the New Year's Eve celebrations. Once the house has been decorated and all the family have arrived, there is one rather more modern tradition to the reunion dinner. The Chinese Spring Festival Gala, which has been broadcast by the state broadcaster CCTV since 1983. Jing Lusi went backstage to find out more. It's China's biggest party, TV on a huge scale, the Chunwan Gala. An epic extravaganza viewed by millions at New Year. It is the most watched TV show on earth. Running live for four hours, each of the selected 1,000 acts rehearsed for up to a year to make the big night run like clockwork. I've come to the national state TV broadcaster, China Central Television, on the day of their first dress rehearsal to discover what goes into putting on such a huge production. Now, incredibly, despite this being a Chinese institution that has been going for over 30 years, we're one of the very few foreign film groups that have ever been allowed to film backstage at the event. This is TV on a huge scale, and it's extraordinary. The acts have been rehearsing relentlessly. For many of them, this could be their big break. The show features every type of Chinese entertainment, including, of course, martial arts. After a very lengthy selection process, Liu Yihai and his martial arts team from Sandong heard they'd beaten the competition and would be appearing on the show live to the nation. Appearing on such a massive show, every move will have to be absolutely perfect. The pressure is immense. Look at the little kids! Oh, they're so cute. That this is an outfit and a half. What's this? Oh, okay, okay. With over a thousand performers and an even bigger army of crew and technicians, I've come to meet artistic director Liu Ito on the day of the first dress rehearsal. So this is the most watched show in the entire world. How can see That's insane. Every year, we wear short clothes. I mean, that, that, you must start with a lot of acts. That's a lot. And what do you think about our uh, martial arts guys? Wushu, how did you choose to get out of here? Wushu is the most popular thing to do. So every year, we need to find the most popular Wushu performers. Okay. I'm off to find Yi Hai and the boys. It'll be their final run-through before going into the full studio, the last chance to pull all their practice together before facing the cameras for the first time. Wow, you And now, finally, it's their turn to do it in front of the cameras. Is the main stage, and they're about to do the performance of a lifetime. 
The vast production line is a huge logistics challenge as over a thousand acts from all over China await their slot in the main studio. Ah, Yi Hai, I'm going to find out how it went. How's it going? Uh, it's good. 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 Well, thank you so much. It's been great to meet you and good luck on the night, yeah? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. And on New Year's Eve, all of China gets to see Yi Hai and his team's flawless performance. As night falls in Beijing, the city lights the way for the millions of Chinese families celebrating New Year's Eve. And Sai and Dave have been invited to join in with local family, the Zhangs. Yen, who invited us for dinner earlier, has asked us to help her and her family make a traditional meal for tonight's celebrations. My husband and brother in law. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. And this is my auntie and mom. They're done in the preparations for the sort of dinner already. Oh, hello, hello. We're going to be making one of my favorite things in the whole world dumplings. Out in the dining room, Jens' dad has already made a start on the filling for the dumplings. So there's the fennel going in. And yeah, what else and is the uh, uh, mince. And minced. Mince, mince. Yeah. Is it yeah, pork? Pork yes, mince. It is pork. pork. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. Yeah. So take the you dough. You just use like this bit. And the shape of the dumpling is very significant, isn't it? The shape of dumpling is actually when you see it, when I close it, yeah. it looks like a Chinese uh, golden ingot. Yes. That was currency in old time, <laughs> basically with money. So that's why we say if you eat more dumplings, you can make more money next year. I'm going to so be that's rich a good next line. year. Yes, you are. <laughs> You've got a lot of filling in there as well. They're not mean dumplings. No, they're not, are they? Remember to turn your ends up. Yeah, it's a bit difficult at first time when you try this. Yeah, that one is great. <laughs> we tend to put it this way, in a circle. That means reunion to us. There's so much tradition yes. in, in Chinese culture, isn't there? Especially in this time, Chinese New Year. It's magical. Ah, I've got the crimp now. That's it. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> yeah. Eh? If Claudia Schiffer was a dumpling, she'd be that one. That's more like Quasimodo and all them, doing it? No, it's not. That one's cracking. It also looks like Frank Bruno. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, very in a very. In the old times, we used to put a coin inside. So anyone in the family eats that one means this person gets the best luck. So that's the you. magic dumpling. Yeah, so but this in England, yeah. we have a tradition about yeah. putting a coin in the Christmas pudding. Oh, wow. So and that's, <laughs> that's supposed. Quite so whoever gets same. the Christmas pudding, it's yeah. the same. Nowadays, we consider it the hygienic part. Then we change it with peanuts. Ah, yep. but, but what happens if you've had too much Baijiu to drink and you just eat your peanuts? <laughs> That's why we're going to put a few rather than just one. <laughs> ah, see? Uh, Yen's mum puts the peanut in the lucky dumpling and pops it on the plate. Mm. Now they're ready to cook in the steamer. <laughs> <laughs> While the dumplings are steaming away, Yen's aunt, Jian Ping, is cooking the rest of dinner. Looks like it's going to be quite a feast. But there's still work to be done. We lend a hand laying the table, ready for the big meal. Yeah, this is, this is magnificent. Just tell us what's on the table. It's fantastic. Okay, so normally in the New Year mm -hmm. uh, Eve dinner like this, we must have a fish here. <laughs> it also has the similar pronunciation of extra wealthy, rich. So yes. okay. that means every year we have wealth. Apart from that, we also should have chicken, duck, beef, pork, everything, tofu, vegetables. So it means the plenty and rich life. What a feast. We know, of course, we brought Baijiu. Wow. Hey, hey. Is this a good one? Have we done all right? Top 10. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
<laughs> what an honour to be part of Yen's family New Year's celebrations. They've made us feel right at home. Is the moustache straight? <laughs> the dumplings are going down a treat and the drink is starting to flow. Brilliant! Ah, oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, it's the best New Year I've ever had. Well, I've had a few. Oh, we have more dumplings. <laughs> this is lamb. Lamb ones. Oh, right, OK. Well, I think it's time for a toast. And traditionally, round a Chinese table, the toast goes to the host and Yen, I think it's your uncle who's going to make the toast tonight. Amazing to think that the warmth, intimacy and excitement we've experienced here with Yen's family is just a tiny part of the billion people letting off fireworks all over China. What an incredible experience! In Beijing, the fireworks signal the end of New Year's Eve. But in Hong Kong, there's a different kind of New Year's Eve ceremony that takes place at the Wong Tai Sin Temple. Nestled in the heart of the only landlocked district in Hong Kong is the astonishing Wong Tai Sin Temple, which is home to three religions, Taoism, Confucianism and Buddhism. This is one of the most popular temples in Hong Kong and it draws huge numbers of people here every single day. But on New Year's Eve, this place is absolutely heaving. There could be as many as 100,000 people here in the evening. People come here every day to make an offering of incense sticks and to pray. But on New Year's Eve, it's a particularly important day to come and to ask for health and good fortune for the coming year. What really brings the crowds to Wong Tai Sin is the chance to have their fortune told according to an ancient practice known as Kao Sim. To tell your fortune, you have to take a bamboo vessel filled with a hundred prayer sticks and shake it until one falls out. That numbered stick is then interpreted by a fortune teller. To take me through the process, I'm meeting Wilson Orr, who has worked here for the past 30 years. You have to kneel down here. Okay. okay do that. Yeah. And then tell our God. Yeah. First of all, your name. Yeah. All right, your day of birth. Yeah. And then the, uh, the question. Okay. So this is going to be my secret. You have no idea what I'm asking. Perfect. And this is the number I always like. Ah, oh, that I like to hear. 17. So number 17. Yeah. Now, usually, my numbered stick would be read by a fortune teller. But this is Hong Kong, a city where tradition meets technology like nowhere else on Earth. And my fortune is going to be told by a machine. So is this it? Yeah, this is the machine. Well, in the uh, old days, if you want the answer, we have the, of course, we have the book. But now we're using some new technology to help to make life easier. And, but, and, and, and your god doesn't mind? Uh, no, no. All you have to do is touch a sensor, start print here, and... The, the, really? Yes, and the message is from here. <laughs> so there it is. 
That is the answer to my question. I'd love to tell you what it says, but it's a secret. The temple might seem tranquil today, but tonight, on New Year's Eve, it's a completely different story. Thousands of people are queuing up outside the temple gates, getting ready to burn incense and make their wishes to bring good fortune for the coming year. The crowds are already gathering for this, the most auspicious time of the New Year's celebrations here in Hong Kong. Do you think this year is going to be a good year for monkeys? Yes. You do? Good luck for the monkey. Good luck for the yes. monkey. Well, now that I've met you, I think I'm, everything is going to be fine. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good luck for everybody. So how long have you been here so that you are at the front of the queue? Around 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you're going to queue for 10 hours. It's that important? It's the lady in pink that I particularly like. She's got this sort of very fluffy, rather friendly-looking cat on her sweatshirt, but her face says, no one messes with me. Now the crowd are really pushing forward. There's going to be this almighty shove, I think, to get right to the front of the queue. I'm wondering if my wish earlier on at this temple should have been that I don't get crushed tonight. This evening, the temple opens at 9, and being the first to enter and make an offering is considered particularly lucky. And these worshippers will stop at nothing to beat the crowd. Is it like this every year? Yes, every year. Once they're inside, worshippers collect incense sticks. The crowd's moving through with their unlit sticks, going through here and getting them lit, and then they're walking back up towards the temple. The sticks are placed at the temple's altars, whilst they wish for good fortune in the new year. The incense smoke carries their messages to the gods. For those most dedicated to attracting good luck, there's the chance to make an especially auspicious offering on the stroke of midnight. The crowd here are waiting patiently. Many of them have been here for five or six hours. And here they come. And there's a real tangible sense of joy and achievement that they've made it. This clearly matters so much. Wherever you may be in China, New Year's Eve is the most celebrated date of the year. From traditional family reunions to the biggest TV show on earth, this night sees in the new year in style. In our next episode, we'll see how Hong Kong keeps the New Year party going for days. We'll explore the ancient art of dragon dancing. It's surprisingly heavy when you're doing this. Oh, sorry. Well, let's go, let's go around there. And join the huge New Year's Day night parade that takes over China's most cosmopolitan city. It's loud, it's noisy, it's a carnival atmosphere. Everyone's dancing. Happy New Year!